Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at a product that resulted from a very problematic crowdfunding campaign. The team at Nextdoc ran into a ton of issues. Shipping dates were pushed back at one point. Their production facility caught on fire so a lot of their stock was destroyed. And then when they actually did start to ship units out, they uh, uh, got a lot of complaints that the units that were shipped out were not turning on. So they had to call all of those back. Uh, but as you can see, the Nextdoc has finally arrived. It's been a long and and bumpy road for the next doc team but today we finally get to take a look at the product from their first production run so I am super excited to open this thing up and see what's inside the next doc launched on Indiegogo as the world's most affordable laptop the thing is though on its own it's not really a laptop it's more of a flexible docking station and when I say flexible I'm referring to functionality this can take a device that normally wouldn't have laptop IO devices such as an Intel compute stick Raspberry Pi or a Windows phone with continuum capabilities and turn it into a full-fledged laptop computer. It can also do some other really neat stuff. It can act as a portable secondary monitor for your laptop and with the proper adapters it can also act as a secondary monitor for your Android and iOS devices. Now this video is titled First Look for a reason. I'm not going to go too in-depth. I'm going to open up the box. We'll take a look around the next stock, talk about quality and features, then I'll hook it up to a Raspberry Pi 3. We'll test it out with that. I'll pull out my laptop and see how this thing works as a secondary monitor. And that's really going to be about it for the first look. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to make a video in the future that goes a little bit more in-depth. Maybe I'll be able to buy a uh, Windows device with continuum capabilities and test that out uh, in the future as well because that's something I would like to do. Uh, but enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box. Ooh, this is exciting. As you can see, the seals are broken, and that's because I did take a little sneak peek inside the box just to make sure that everything arrived in one piece, and I also uh, snapped a quick photo to tease you guys on Facebook, but I didn't actually take anything out and handle it. So let's pop this thing open. Man, guys, there's a lot of adrenaline running through my system right now. Oh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. All right, so it looks like we have the next stock itself right here, uh, guarded by um, these little foam buffers, and there's a power supply right Right here it looks like we have an HDMI cable and some other adapters I'll take a closer look at that stuff after we get everything out of the box so I'll pull those off and put them to the side and wow I'm actually surprised that this thing's weight it feels it feels pretty beefy you know it, wow uh, I'm actually surprised that looks really good and it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be and I realized in that last shot you guys couldn't really see anything so I turned the laptop around and zoomed out and as you can see I mean it looks just like your typical day-to-day -day laptop I did get a chance to handle it for a couple seconds off camera and I have to say that the plastics that they use for this do feel a bit weird I'm um, granted I did pick it up for $119 but I have to say that the plastics uh, definitely do feel a tad bit cheap I see a power button right here what happens when we we hold that down okay so the power light has turned on are we going to get anything else will give us a logo screen or anything like that okay uh, so nothing it looks like it auto shut off because nothing is connected and as I said uh, this is really just a dummy laptop concerning accessories there's really nothing too interesting here we have the power supply female HDMI to female HDMI adapter not really sure why we need this maybe I will figure it out as I go along with this first look video uh, micro USB to USB cable mini HDMI to HDMI cable all the way over to the left uh, each of these cables is about 10 inches in length and of course we have the user manual right here as I said earlier this thing does have a nice weight to it and when you hold it in your hands it feels structurally sound for the most part but the mediocre plastics used to manufacture this thing kind of make it feel like a toy to be honest if we take a look at the top we can see that the only thing on the lid is the next doc logo or actually I guess it would just be the next logo I believe that's actually the name of the company uh, they are called the next on the left side you can see the input for our power jack uh, USB port and mini HDMI in on the other side you can see an additional USB port headphone jack and micro SD card slot if we move over to the back you can see that there are four rubber feet on the bottom to keep this thing from sliding around all over the place additionally you can see some holes for the speakers and it appears that this thing might just be held together by screw so at the end of this video I might have a go at taking this thing apart I'm not promising anything uh, but I'll definitely try to open this up and see what is inside on the back there's nothing really 
there, and on the front, there's nothing really there either. Uh, there's just this little cutout to allow you to easily get a hold of the lid and open the next dock up. Inside, you will find a 1366 by 768 glossy 14.1 inch T in display. Right above that, you can see that apparently the next dock is equipped with a webcam, and there's specifications that wasn't mentioned, but in the uh, prototype pictures that was pictured, so I wasn't really sure if it's going to ship with a webcam or not. Uh, but as you can see, it did ship with a webcam. Uh, down here, you can see our keyboard. I typed around with it a little bit, and it does feel okay, in my opinion, especially for something in this price range. Um, I would go as far as to say that it actually feels pretty decent, and that's really something that's more of a uh, subjective trait uh, of a laptop. You know, some people might not find it adequate, but personally, uh, I actually kind of like the keyboard. Now, below that, you can see a single-piece trackpad. Now, that's something that I'm really not a big fan of. I usually run into issues with single piece trackpads. Um, so we will see how this works out when I actually plug in the Raspberry Pi and start using this thing. Uh, up here you can see some LED indication lights and there are two small holes for two microphones. As you can see, I now have the Raspberry Pi 3 hooked up to the next dock, and I was actually using it with the next dock 30 minutes prior to this, and I was really impressed with how well the Raspberry Pi 3 works in conjunction with this device. Now, I did run into two small problems. I could not figure out how to get the webcam or the built-in microphones to work with the Raspberry Pi 3. I tried to do some research online, and I could not find uh, any documentation on how to get those features to work with the Raspberry Pi. And speaking of documentation, um, as far getting everything set up with the Raspberry Pi, you're kind of left on your own. The uh, manual does tell you how to connect uh, via Bluetooth and you connect the uh, trackpad and keyboard uh, via Bluetooth just like any other Bluetooth device. You open up your Bluetooth manager, you search for devices and voila, you'll see something uh, along the lines of next dock keyboard. You pair that and then you're good to go. Uh, and yes, initially you do need to have an external dedicated mouse hooked up to this in order to initially pair the keyboard and trackpad. As far as getting everything up and running with the Raspberry Pi is concerned, uh, I went online to see if anyone had uh, documented stuff on it already. And the Nextdoc website actually has a really, really helpful page on it. Now there's one really helpful section here labeled, how can I connect keyboard and touchpad after reboot? Because every time you reboot the Raspberry Pi with Raspbian, uh, you have to reconnect the Bluetooth devices, which means you have to plug in an external mouse and go into your Bluetooth menu and pair them. Um, but you can get uh, Raspbian to do that automatically by just following this guide. It's really easy. It took me like, I think, three minutes to get that uh, to where it needed to be. So that was super helpful. Uh, and I did actually run into one of the issues listed here. It was the no sound issue for some reason. Uh, the sound was not playing through HDMI. So I just went into the configuration text changed the setting, and I was good to go. So enough of me blabbering now, let's actually turn the next dock on and check out what exactly this thing looks like when it is in action. At this point, all I would have to do is throw this into a cheap case, slap it onto the back of the laptop with some 3M command strips, and bam! I would have a Raspberry Pi 3 laptop, or really that applies to any other single board computer such as the Odroid C2 uh, or even uh, something like the Intel Compute Stick. Uh, now I did grab a USB dummy load, uh, actually I have it back here. Um, and I uh, tested out the USB port, had no problem pulling one amp from that USB port at five volts. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. I'm gonna hold down the power button and we are now receiving power to the Raspberry Pi. It's going through the boot sequence. And by the way, uh, there is one other issue I ran into with using the Raspberry Pi with the next dock. Uh, and that is when you actually turn the Raspberry Pi off, when you hit shutdown, uh, the screen will go black, but the laptop will actually still be on providing power to the Raspberry Pi. So in order to shut it off, you actually have to force shut it off. You just have to hold the power button down for 10 seconds and that's really it. And everything is up and running now. In my opinion, the 1366 by 768 14 inch display actually looks pretty good good. Uh, viewing angles are good. Color production is great. The only issue I have with it is the glossy finish. As you can see, there is clearly some reflection going on there. Uh, when I did the Pi Top C review, I was really surprised because uh, that also has a 1366 by 768 display and a lot of people complained about it. They were like, wow, that resolution's garbage. That screen's crap. Uh, it's, it's, what a horrible resolution, you know? And I really didn't get that because I thought 1366 by 768 was perfectly adequate for 
a screen of that size. I feel the same way here. Um, but really, once again, that's more of a matter of opinion. Uh, the more I used the keyboard, the more I liked it. Uh, there's a lot of vertical movement in the keys, and it's definitely one of the better keyboards I have ever used on a laptop-like device. Now, the trackpad definitely has its ups and downs. Feedback-wise, it actually feels really good. It's probably one of the uh, best-feeling single-piece trackpads that I have ever used. Really like the feedback that I get from this thing. Uh, but as far as responsiveness is concerned, it's really all not that responsive, and I'm not sure if that's because of the design of the trackpad or just because we are using the trackpad through a Bluetooth connection. I tried to play with some of the cursor settings in Raspbian, and that did absolutely nothing to fix anything. Um, so it's usable, but it's definitely not the most responsive thing in the world. So I popped open the Raspberry Pi edition of Minecraft real quick just to mess around with it on the next dock, and I am glad I did because it brought a really interesting issue to my attention. Tension. So right now I'm using the next dot keyboard in conjunction with an external uh, wireless mouse to play Minecraft But if I move over to use the trackpad, so I'm gonna try to use the trackpad right now I'm still holding down W to walk forward all of a sudden, I stop walking. It appears that you cannot use the keyboard and trackpad at the same time. You can only use one or the other, um, which isn't really a big deal when you're just doing basic office tasks like writing up a Word document or browsing the web. Uh, but when you try to play a game or something similar, uh, that issue becomes really problematic and really frustrating. So that's definitely an issue to note. So at this point in the video, you can clearly see that the next dock is not perfect, but this is a crowdfunded product on its first production run. That is expected. There's going to be some sort of quirk. I mean, when you go into buying something that's crowdfunded like this on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, you, you should really go in with the expectation that, you know, there's going to be one or two issues with it, especially if it's on its first production run uh, like this product is. So, I mean, I'm honestly not disappointed with it at this point. I think this is a really neat concept, a lot of possibilities for this, and, you know, I wish I had the money and the time to test all of said possibilities out, but unfortunately, uh, I just don't. And I'm not going to get a lot of questions in the comments section, uh, like, why didn't you test this? Or why didn't you test this? Or why didn't you test this device? Or uh, comments like that. And, you know, the answer is, one, I don't have time, and two, I'm a small channel, and I don't have the money to buy, like, 50 different devices. Audio quality from the built-in speakers is pretty mediocre, but they get the job done. I'll just play a quick sample uh, through the microphone real quick. And unlike the trackpad, the keyboard is actually pretty pleasant to use. It's really responsive. And one more thing to note before I wrap it up with the Raspberry Pi is that the additional USB port and the micro SD card reader built into the next talk do not act as expansion for the Raspberry Pi 3. So if you want to plug something into the Raspberry Pi, you're going to have to plug it in directly uh, to one of the Pi's USB ports. So right now the next dock is acting as a secondary display and as an expansion hub to my SUSE G75VW laptop that I have right here. I have it hooked up via USB and HDMI um, and the webcam is working, the microphone is working, uh, the additional USB 2.0 port and the micro SD card on the side is working and of course I can also play audio uh, from the laptop to the next dock. Um, so everything is functional with this right now except for the uh, keyboard and trackpad because there's really no point because you know my laptop already has a keyboard and trackpad um but i'm gonna open up cam studio or actually not cam studio sorry but a uh, cyberlink ucam 7 i just downloaded that real quick to use as a uh, demo webcam application and we'll check out the quality of the microphone and built-in webcam so the fact that this thing can act as a standalone dedicated secondary monitor holds a lot of value in itself, um, especially for someone like me who uh, I do edit video on the go every once in a while using my SUS G75. Um, and you know, this would really come in handy. It would be awesome just to have a uh, portable editing setup like this where I could have two monitors. Uh, and then another scenario where this would really be cool is at LAN parties. So let's say you want to bring your gaming laptop, uh, but you also, you know, want to bring a secondary 
monitor. With this, you don't have to deal with any cables or anything. It's got a built-in 10 amp hour battery. So, you know, you're, you're good for a really long time. Uh, actually, I've been running this for about five hours, I think now at this point without charging it. And it unfortunately doesn't have any sort of battery uh, indication lights on it to tell you the exact percentage, but you know, it's still running strong after five hours of use. So as you can see, the quality of the webcam is okay, but the quality of, uh, I had a voice crack there, um, but the quality of the audio uh, from the two built-in microphones is actually surprisingly good. Um, I recorded a clip already and played it back to myself so I could actually get a feel uh, for what the quality would be like, and I was really surprised because the audio came out really clear. Um, the webcam's only 480p and it's using a really small sensor, so for what it is, it's okay, but you know, the audio definitely on the good side as far as built-in microphones are concerned. Okay, so that wasn't too hard to break into. All I had to do was remove the surrounding screws and pry the back off. Right smack dab in the center, you can see our rechargeable 10,000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. Right above that, you can see the bottom of our trackpad. There's just a hub here for the uh, USB port, audio in, um, and I believe the micro SD card reader as well is on that board. And then over here, it looks like we have most of our power circuitry um, for charging, and I believe for driving the LCD as well, along with uh, all of our Bluetooth um, connections connectivity uh, and all that good stuff. So, I mean, there's really not too much here. Once again, uh, this is just a dock. You can see uh, two tiny, tiny little speakers and yeah, that's about it. Uh, pretty empty and uh, you know, it's a pretty nice clean layout, I guess. I mean, they, there's not much in here, but what is in here looks like it's it's been, you know, properly seated. Um, and for the most part, it looks good. So that's really about it for just looking inside here because eh, as you can see, there's really not that much. I have to admit, I was starting to get a little bit skeptical about this product um, because after I bought this, I read a lot of stuff online. You know, there were a lot of people saying that this was a scam for some reason. They had absolutely no hard evidence. Uh, they couldn't link me back to a source to where they got their information. There was just a ton of people out there saying this was a scam for absolutely no reason. Um, and it was kind of throwing me off. Uh, and then I started to become suspicious, you know, when the factory fire happened and they kept pushing the ship date of the uh, product back and that was kind of weird. I was like, oh, well, uh, gosh, I hope those people weren't right. Um, but as you can see, they shipped the product. Those people were, you know, completely wrong. Not really sure where that rumor originated from. Um, and I must say, it's a, it's definitely a pretty darn good product. Uh, it does have some quirks. There's definitely some issues that need to be worked out. I've already talked about all of those. Um, you know, it would be nice to have a 1080p screen. Once again, I'm fine with 1366 by 768, but I know a lot of people uh, would like to see this go full HD. Um, yeah, the trackpad needs some work. The execution of the keyboard and the trackpad needs some work. Uh, that issue where, you know, one cuts out if you use the other is <laughs> really, really frustrating to say the least. Um, and, you know, the, the plastics, as far as the quality is concerned, uh, I'm not a big fan of the plastics that they use. As I said earlier, uh, it makes it feel kind of like a toy. I mean, aesthetically, it looks really nice. It looks like a laptop. Um, but when you pick it up and you like rub your hands over it, you're like, huh. Kind of feels like that, uh, that, that that Playhouse Barbie laptop that my sister had when she was eight years old, you know? But overall, this does feel structurally sound, and as I said earlier, you do have to keep in mind that this is a sub $150 device. So that's gonna be about it for this video. I had a lot of fun taking a look at the next stock. A really awesome product, and I'm really looking forward to see where exactly this thing goes in the future, because I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, it still has a lot of uses that I didn't demonstrate here. I scratched the surface, but there's still a ton of stuff you could do with this so that's gonna be about it for this video i would love to hear some discussion from you guys so uh, if you have something to say about this go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section don't forget to drop a like on this video if you didn't like this video please tell me why and of course please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to support me you can use my amazon or ebay affiliate links both of which will be in the description you can also support me via patreon that link will be in the description as well and of course, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.